Amen. It's wonderful to be here this morning. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord? I sense an expectation. Amen. The expectant for God to do awesome stuff. Welcome to the online people as well. It's wonderful to be with you guys here in East London. Luckily, your name didn't get changed. It almost did, apparently. But it seems like there's a stirring in the Eastern Cape. Eh? The, the spotlight is on the Eastern Cape with all these changing of names. But I want you to say, say Tebecha. Come, I hear the clicks there. Okay, so we're off to Tebecha one of these days. Maybe the name will stay. I don't know. Apparently, there's a lot of disputes, and the PE people aren't very happy about the name change for various reasons. But the Lord is good. Amen. So in, in the 1970s, who was born in the 1970s? Anyone? <laughs> it's a young crowd, this, this, this second service. <laughs> so I was born in 1977, so don't give your age away. But in the, in the early 70s, there was a song that went like this. Maybe some of you know it or remember it. And I'm not going to try and sing, okay? <laughs> Leave that to the band. So it says the following. It says, put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. And when I started this year on the 1st of January, I, I said to my family, let's all seek the Lord. Let's pray and ask God, what does he want for us for this year? What is, what is the word for the year? What, what does he want to show us in preparation for 2021. And I had this picture of me, and I believe it was for many other people, coming out of this challenging last year we've had is to take both our hands and place them in the hand of Jesus. Amen. But both our hands, not just the one hand. So I believe it's a year of trust. Tell someone next to you, trust. Because trust is simply relational faith. Trust is relate or having putting your faith in someone that you know, someone that you relate to. So it's a, it's a year of trusting God, I believe. Because sometimes we put one hand in the hand of God and we've got another hand, sort of a back door, you know, an open door to just trust in something else in case trusting in God doesn't fully work, you know, according to what we want. So then we, we, we've got our hand in in something else or on something else because at least I've got this to fall back on. And I believe the Lord is calling us to, to, to challenge ourselves in this time and put our, both our hands in the man from Galilee, the hands of the man, Jesus Christ. Because you see, it, it, it's about what God is saying and what he's doing. Amen. It's not just trusting blindly. It's trusting in, in Jesus' words and his actions. So tell someone next to you, what is Jesus saying and what is he doing? Maybe you must ask yourself that question. What is he saying to you? And what, is he, what do you see him doing? And that's what I want to get to this morning because I want to read together with us from Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 33. I want to read the story of, of Jesus walking on the Sea of Galilee. And that's why I've entitled this message, Let's Walk on Water, because Jesus is calling us out. Amen. He's calling us to step out and to trust in Him more than we have before. Amen. So let's read together. But before we read, I just want to give a little bit of a context of Matthew chapter 14. Yeah, Jesus has just fed 5,000 people. Say 5,000 people. And at the end of chapter 15, Matthew writes, Jesus feeds another 4,000 people. Say 4,000 people. It was actually only men, so it must have been more if you include the women and the children. Jesus had just done two incredible miracles in that time. And in between all of that, it says he healed multitudes. Say so healed multitudes. Jesus was performing miracle after miracle. He was doing incredible stuff with a little bit of fish, a little bit of bread. He fed masses and masses of people and he healed every single person that came to him. And I believe Jesus was taking his disciples in this time on a journey, showing them the power of the Father and the love of the Father. Jesus is all powerful. God is all powerful. I mean, God is loving. God is wanting through his son. And he wanted to show us here in this piece that Matthew writes of how much he loves us as the world. For God so loved the world that we've just sung. 
that he gave. He did things that were impossible for man. He, he made it possible. That is the God we serve. And through all these miracles, Jesus demonstrated the love and the power of God. And I love how he's taking his disciples on this journey. And he says, go across the sea. I'm going to pray. You go. And, and, and Jesus is taking us on a journey. Amen. If you hear yeah, this morning and you're a follower of Jesus, because I believe most of us are followers of Jesus in this place. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here this morning. There's a lot of other stuff we could be doing. But if you're following Jesus, you're a disciple of Jesus. Sometimes he puts you in a boat. Sometimes he says, go across to the other side and I will come to you. And, and doesn't it sound a bit like the last year we've been through? There's been storms and challenges, but, but are we following Jesus? Are we moving with Jesus? Amen. I believe it's a season where we just need to up just our moving with Jesus a little bit. And that's what the story should encourage us to do when we read about it. So let's, let's read together from Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening had come, he was alone there. It's a good time sometimes to be alone just like Jesus did and to pray, to seek the face of God. That's what we're doing in this fasting time. So Jesus did it. But he sent his disciples and, and it said the boat was now in the middle of the sea Tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to him walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. An incredible, powerful story. I'm sure there have been many sermons preached on many different angles, and one can say so much on this passage, and, and even theologians disagree sometimes on, on what is the focus and w what is the lessons that we should take out of this. But there's so much that we can speak about. But this morning, I just want to share three thoughts with you on what Jesus specifically said to his disciples and how we can apply that to our own lives when it comes to the challenges of life. Anyone here been through challenges the last year or so? Anyone heard of a, a virus that's affected the whole world? You know, are we in, in reality? <laughs> All of us have been through challenges we probably never experienced before in this last year. We've been confronted with stuff that we've never known before. There was no like plan for this. We didn't know how to handle this. But isn't it actually an amazing thing that's happened because we've been in a way shaken just like these disciples were shaken. We, we're on this journey with Jesus. And yeah, suddenly the wind is from the front. Suddenly the waves are coming against us. Literally, you know, waves and waves of, of COVID. Eh? So the disciples found themselves in this challenging place where their boat was tossed and shaken. And many of our lives in this last while have been tossed and shaken. Can anyone identify with that? I, I certainly have. More than just because of the virus, Jesus is just shaking stuff out of my life and he wants to shake stuff out of all of our lives. He's just using circumstances. And there was a great wind from the front causing waves and suddenly these disciples not only have to contend with the wind and the waves, but yeah, they have to contend with this ghost that they're seeing. Or so they thought. And isn't it amazing when, when there's a shaking, there's sometimes uncertainty and doubt. In fact, in most of our lives as people, when there's a shaking and a challenge, then guess what comes out? Uncertainty, doubt, and eventually fear. And fear makes us see things that aren't really there. Fear makes us think the worst. Isn't that so? In this last while, I'm sure many of us have thought the worst. You know, we've, people are of this conspiracy stuff. There's weird stuff happening. It's the end times. It's all of this stuff. And, and yes, it could be. 
But why do we always think the worst? Why? Because we, we've, we're filled with fear many times. There's fear there. There's, there's faith, yes. But sometimes the fear and the doubt come out in the challenges. And fear causes us to, to, to think and see things that really aren't there. And we tend to make things up in our lives. And yet Jesus comes to this challenging place that his disciples find themselves in. And guess what? He comes on the very thing that's challenging them. Isn't that beautiful? Our Jesus is walking on the very thing that the water is challenging them. The wind causes the waves to rock their boat. And guess what? The thing that's rocking their boat, Jesus walks on that. Isn't that beautiful? He walks on the water saying that he is operating at another level. Tell someone next to you, Jesus is operating at another level. Your pastor always says, next level, upgrade, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> that is Jesus, yes, more, <laughs> more. Jesus is operating at another level. just want to share a story that, that happened to us Last year, October last year, in our church in Bloemfontein, we were having a seminar on witnessing and reaching out, a share your faith seminar. And I was encouraging the people to really step out and to, and to share their testimonies, that each one of us have a testimony. And so we were 19 people, including my son, Matthew, who's 10 years old, turning 11 this year. And so we're in this venue. We, we just moved to a new venue. And so I'm sharing my testimony and encouraging others to share the testament. This guy walks in and, and everyone's sort of a little bit unsettled and he walks to the back and he unplugs the laptop. He's got a balaclava on or a mask with a sort of a beanie over his head and then he's, he's dressed in sort of these worker municipal clothes. So I wasn't sure is it, is it like, a, 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 like a security guard or what's, you know, what's this guy? But I'm carrying on. I'm so passionately sharing and everyone's getting a bit uneasy and one of our guys gets up and he Walks to him, and then suddenly we just hear the gun cocking, the pistol. He cocks his pistol. And I'm like, and then I realize, okay, I think it's time for me to stop talking now. <laughs> and so meanwhile, these guys who were in our seminar, afterwards they tell me they thought that I had organized this guy to come in and to like really, you know, scare them with a bit of hell and brimstone kind of, you know, it's time to die. Are you gonna, you know, are, you gonna are you sure that you're saved and are you going to share your testimony with people? <laughs> So, so then he speaks to this guy, one of our guys in Sutu, and he says to him, he says, yeah, and he chucks this green checkers bag, and he says, I want all the cell phones. And so we, we, everyone starts to take out their cell phone, like a bit unsure, and, like, and I'm like, I'm taking my phone out of my pocket like this, and then he goes, no, no, pastor, I don't want your phone. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what is this now? And then he says to this guy in Sutu, he says, no, he actually wants all, he doesn't want to give the, give the cell phones back to the black people. He only wants the white people's cell phones because he wants to make an example here tonight. That's what he says to this guy in Sutu. So this guy panics a bit, our, our guy. He was like, okay, someone's going to get shot here tonight. And so he makes us all come to the front of the, and lie down and, and in that moment, as I was standing there before I sort of lay down on the floor, I felt the Lord saying to me, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. But I'm thinking like, does that mean, you know, hey, it's time for me to die now. I'm going to be with Jesus. You know, it's all going to be fine. Paul said, you know, to die is gain. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. So, so it's going to be, it's better to die. So we lie down and, and everyone, and then he says, everyone must, yeah, we, we all lay down at the front there. And then he says to me, so I'm now, and yeah, my son, I'm, I'm thinking like, if something happens here, I mean, I don't want my son to see me getting shot in front of him. I don't want, I don't want there to be bloodshed yet tonight, but there's a possibility. I've seen churches being broken into it. And, and then he says to me, stand up, pastor. He says, pastor, stand up. But I'm facing that way and he's at the back and I get this cold feeling coming through my body. I just think that this is it now. He's going to make an example of, of me. And I really had to, had to stand on that word that the Lord said, it's going to be fine. And then he says to me, pray, pastor, pray, pray, pray. It's amazing how sometimes the Lord uses a robber to encourage you to pray, you know. <laughs> I've never prayed in the spirit like I prayed that night because then you realize how you need the, your spiritual language, how you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you don't understand, you don't know what to pray now, but you pray. And you feel like you're praying from the 
the depths of your spirit. And I don't know, it felt like 10 minutes was probably only two, one or two minutes, and he eventually left with half the people's cell phones and the laptop, and he was out of there. Luckily, he wasn't there to kill, but just to steal, because the devil kills, steals, and destroys. Luckily for us, that night wasn't the night for killing. It was just the night for stealing. But what was amazing for me in that story is that Jesus was faithful to speak to me. And Jesus was saying to me exactly what he said to the disciples that night. He said, it is I. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. Be of good cheer. Isn't it beautiful when, when in the midst of our challenges, Jesus wants to say to us, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Three things he says here. And the first thing he says was that, he says, he doesn't just comfort them by a nice word. He, he really says, be of good cheer, be of good courage. The Greek word there is, be of good courage, be bold. Tell someone next to you, be bold. So, so the Spirit of God, through Jesus right here, and, and, and the, the Spirit of God wants to comfort us in this time, friends. He wants to tell us, be of good cheer, be, be full of courage and be bold in this time. Don't be afraid. And maybe he wants to say a word for you. To, maybe there's someone or two or three people that need to hear that God is in your challenge. Amen. Jesus is in the middle of that. And I love how he says, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. It is I. That's so beautiful. He's the great I am and he's present and he always will be present. Isn't that wonderful? In that moment where I was thinking, this is the end of my life. I'm going to die now. Jesus says, I'm in the midst of this. I'm in the presence of your trouble and your storm. And sometimes he uses that thing that's even challenging and he walks on that thing. He says, you know what? I'm operating at another level. The great I am is always present. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. And I want to say this morning, not only is Jesus necessary, he is enough. He's more than enough. Whoever you are, he is enough for you this morning. Listen to this. To the artist, he's the altogether lovely. To the architect, he's the chief cornerstone. To the banker, he's the hidden treasure. To the baker, he's the living bread. To the biologist, he is the life. To the builder, he's the sure foundation. To the doctor, he's the great physician. To the educator, he's the great teacher. To the farmer, he's the lord of the harvest. To the florist, he's the rose of Sharon. To the geologist, he's the rock of ages. To the jurist, he is the righteous judge. To the jeweler, he is the pearl of great price. To the lawyer, he is my advocate. To the publisher, he is the good tidings of great joy. To the philosopher, he is the wisdom of God. To the preacher, he is the word of God. To the sculptor, he is the living stone. To the statesman, he is the desire of all nations. To the theologian, he is the author and finisher of our faith. To the traveler, he's the new and living way. To the sinner, he's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. To the saint, he's the Son of the living God, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Lord. He is the I Am. Can we give the Lord a hand for who he is? And he's not only the I Am, he's your I Am. He says, it is I am in the middle of your challenge. I'm in the middle of your storm. And I want to come and comfort you. You see, challenges will always expose where our focus is. Where has your focus been the last while? And all of us have to be honest. We have lost a little bit of focus at times. Even Andre lost focus at times. <laughs> Just got to keep him humble. <laughs> But challenges are going to expose where our focus is. But I want to say today that Jesus is always with you. Jesus is always present. And we just need to realize this, know this, and act on this. That is called faith. Realizing that Jesus is the great I am. And he says to all of us, be of good cheer. Be of strong courage. It is I, don't be afraid. And the don't be afraid isn't a suggestion. It's a command. Do not be afraid. So the first thing I want to remind you of this morning is that Jesus is your comforter. He's in your challenge and he comes to comfort you right there in your challenge. 
And so Peter hears this. Peter hears what Jesus has said. And guess what? He sees what Jesus is doing. Even though he's not 100% convinced yet that this is Jesus. Because it looks like a ghost. I'm sure at 3 o'clock in the morning, someone walking on the water. That's weird. Especially when you're already full of fear. But Peter, the, the man that he is, he, he's a risk taker. He, he thinks, well, if this is Jesus, Jesus, come and prove yourself to me. So he's a little bit, you know, arrogant in a way, thinking, you know, Jesus, come and prove yourself to me. But Jesus was loving enough to, to show Peter, it's really me. And what does he say? He says, Lord, if it is you, command me to walk on this water. Command me to come to you on the water. I love how Peter's faith, it's not, he was a very young believer at the time, so his faith is yeah, and then his faith is there, and then his faith is yeah. He's a very up and down personality, very bold and very rough around the edges. Jesus needed to form him a little bit, but at least Jesus could work with a guy like Peter, right? But what does Jesus say? Jesus said, I'm going to just so demonstrate to this guy who, who I am, and I'm going to show him that I can use him if he can just believe. So he says, come. He says one word, come. See, Jesus doesn't have to speak a lot. Jesus only said three short little phrases in this long passage that Matthew writes, but when he says something, it's so powerful. One word can change our lives, amen. One word from the Lord can change our lives. And Peter responds, and he steps out of the boat in obedience to the word of, of God. Are you going to step out in obedience to the word of God in this season? Jesus tells him to come to him, not to walk on the water. De Jesus doesn't say, come and walk on the water. Now, Jesus just says, come. But Peter had faith to walk on the water. Peter says, Lord, I, I believe if it's you, then, then you'll command me to walk on the water. And he waits for that command. And what does he do? He walks on the water. Why? Because he saw Jesus doing it. I believe he could see what Jesus was doing. And that's what gave him faith to do the same thing. If Jesus wasn't walking on the water, it would be difficult for Peter to believe that he could walk on water. But he could see that Jesus is walking on the water. Jesus can do the impossible. And if Jesus commands me, if he does something and he says something, surely I can also do it. So are we believing in God's word? Are we seeing what God is doing and believing what he's saying? Do we see Jesus and do we hear what he's saying? Despite the fear and the doubt, the uncertainty that has crept in. And I want to challenge us this morning. Jesus is calling each of us to step out from where we are. Just to take that one step. Step out of that boat and come to him. It's not about walking on the water. It's not about doing amazing stuff. It's about going to Jesus. Responding to Jesus. But I want to say it's always going to be according to your faith. What do you have faith for? What do you believe is possible? Because sometimes we want stuff to happen in our own natural flesh and, and we desire stuff and it's not, it's not of faith because God hasn't said it and God hasn't done it. But if God has done something and he has said something, we can believe him. And I want to say this morning, when you walk in the spirit of God, you will know what Jesus is busy doing. He will show you. The Holy Spirit will show you, first of all, what Jesus is, is saying, and secondly, what he's doing. And one thing I know, and I've experienced it right now in this church, this weekend was just so amazing to be part of Life Encounter yesterday. Anyone here part of Life Encounter yesterday? A couple of people. But Jesus is doing one thing that he promised to do, and that is to build his church. He is building his church, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. I'm, that's why I'm saying yes to the Lord. That's why I'm stepping out to go to this place called Gerbera. <laughs> it's easier to say that than Kebechai. And, I, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been an interesting time for us. It's been a season of faith, as the Lord said at the beginning of the year, trust me, trust me, little did I know that I would end up in East London at the end of February. <laughs> Little did I know that I would be going to Port Elizabeth at the beginning of May. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I, on the 1st of January this year, I didn't have a clue as to where God was taking me, but he said, trust me. And I remember saying yes to the Lord when I first said yes to going to full-time ministry. It was like exactly the same step of faith. Lord, I'm, I've got an engineering qualification. I haven't got much theological qualifications. I've done Bible school. I've, I've got a basic foundation, but I'm like Peter, Lord. I'm just, I'm just, I see what you're doing. I see you building your church and I want to be a part of this. 
And that's what made me step out again now because in the, in the December holidays, I was at a place where I thought, you know what, it's maybe just easier to go back to the marketplace. Maybe it's just easier to, because ministry is not easy. But when the Lord says, come, then we can do the impossible. Amen. And yeah, our kids are all three in a school. I mean, Ganubi Primary accepted our kids within a week of school starting this year. I mean, that's a miracle. I think we need to give praise to God for that. And we found an amazing house we, in Henk and, and Marisa's house on the, on the sea there in Ganubia. I mean, we've been so blessed, but God did miracles to, to get us here within two weeks of school starting. We, had, we were, had to make a decision. We're coming to East London before we go to PE. It, it's just incredible how God has worked these things out because he's a miracle working God. And when he calls us, we can do it. Amen. So some of you is calling you to just come and be a part of what he's doing right here in this church. And I know a lot of you are already doing it, but I want to challenge you to, to grow even more and to surrender more. So for some of us, he's calling you to surrender your life to him. For some, he's calling you just to obey him in, in, in what you don't even understand, but you know it's God's voice. Some of you is calling you to just serve some way, to, to give more to start to pray for people, step out and, and pray. I remember the, the first time I, I was encouraged to start to pray for people, just responding for ministry or just needing prayer. And I was so like, no confidence and don't have a word from the Lord always. And when I started to pray for people, I'll never forget praying for someone and the Lord just started to give me words for this person. I just stepped out in faith. Little did I know, it didn't make sense to me. And then the person's like, how did you know this? I just said, well, I just stepped out. The Lord started showing me stuff. So some, for some of us, we just need to start to pray for people and the Lord will give you words, but take that step. Start to reach out, just, just share the love of Jesus with somebody strange and see how the Lord blesses you. See how the Lord blesses that person and how fulfilling it is to reach out and share the love of God. Start. Maybe some of you have been called to start something that will change the world, that will make a difference in someone's life or in many people's lives. But just come and step out and come to Jesus because he's calling each one of us. And so Peter had this incredible experience of, of responding and walking on the water. And I imagine how amazing it must have been. Eh? My, my kids now, and we've got a swimming pool there in Bloemfontein because it's important to have a swimming pool in Bloemfontein because it gets very hot in the summer. So they love to swim. And then they heard the story of, Jesus walking on the water and Peter also. So they thought, let, let, let's try and see if we can walk on water. So they, first of all, they run and then uh, they fall. So, so let's now walk to the edge of the pool and we just carry on walking. But every time they, they fall, you know, they haven't quite got it right yet to walk on water. Okay? I also tried a couple of times, but I don't think the Lord wants me to physically walk on water. But Peter must have this incredible experience of walking on water. Imagine that. Imagine how it must have felt to defy the laws of science. But I think what was even more incredible and exhilarating for Peter was just coming to Jesus. That response to Jesus and walking to him and seeing his eyes and just focusing on him and seeing how Jesus would do miracles in and through his life. And it was awesome until he, until he lost focus. He looked a little bit away from Jesus and he saw the storm. Because that's what we do sometimes. We look away from Jesus and we look at the storm and then, oh, then we start to sing. But what was amazing is that as soon as he lost focus, Jesus was there to pick him up. And the Bible says he looked at the wind and the wind was boisterous, meaning forceful, powerful, and he began to sink. And you see, many times the storm is boisterous. The storm is forceful and powerful. And when we see it, we get fearful again. But guess what? Jesus is saying to us, you know what? I want you to grow in your faith. And he rebukes Peter, but, but I don't see it as this harsh rebuke. I see it as like, Peter, why, why, why didn't you believe until the end? You could have walked further. But Peter, I want to show you that your faith isn't quite where you think it is because you can start off with faith, but are you going to finish in faith? Because sometimes we're excited and then, you know, faith is a journey. Faith isn't something that we just do. It's not just quick, quick fix, microwave the generation that we live in. And faith is a, is a journey and, and God wants us, friends, to grow in our faith. That's the last thing I want to say this morning. He says to us, 
Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Secondly, he says to us, come, come out, step out, take the step. But then he says to us, you know what? It's important for you to grow in your faith. Because sometimes when you step out, things don't quite work out how you want them to. But at least you've stepped out. At least when you fall, guess what? I will never let you go. I want you to grow in your faith. I want you to come to a place where you overcome that which is challenging you. One Bible commentator said the following, in this, in this largest context, this is the story of every Christian. It's our story too as we move back and forth between doubt and faith. Sometimes focusing on the storm, sometimes focusing on Jesus. That is who we are as people. And Jesus understands that but he wants us to grow. He wants us to keep stepping out for him. Amen. And there's a battle between faith and fear in all of us. But I want to say Jesus is always going to pick us up. When we fall, he encourages our faith to grow. But we need to keep our eyes on him. We need to keep our focus. And that's what tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday are about, friends. We can keep our eyes. We can just turn away a little bit from the world and from all the distractions and say, Jesus, I want to keep my eyes on you. I want to step out in the season. I want to trust you for amazing stuff. Peter's faith grew incredibly from this experience, so much so that God used him mightily. Look at the life of Peter and how amazing God worked through his life. And you see, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and guess what? They all worshipped him. When we grow in faith, friends, two things happen. Number one, when, or when we, sorry, when we step out, two things will happen. Doesn't matter the outcome. Doesn't matter about the walking on the water, the miracles, all of that. When we step out in faith, guess what happens? It leads to worship. And it says they all worshipped him together. It doesn't only lead to, to worship, it leads to a greater sense of community. And I believe there was, there was just a sense of awe and wonder about Jesus and his disciples pulled together and they were, they were thinking, yes, you know what? Together we can do this for Jesus. And that's what they did. If you look at history, we wouldn't have been here today if it wasn't for those 12 guys that decided we can do this for Jesus. We're going to walk on water for him. And both of those things, worship and a greater sense of community, lead to even greater faith. It leads us to grow in faith. And I believe, I, I, I didn't share it in the earlier service, but I believe this church, Andre, for you, for this church, I believe God has called Show for East London, specifically like these disciples or like Peter, to step out in faith and to encourage the greater body of believers in this town to step out in faith. It's a, it's a worshiping community. It's a community of worship and, and of family. Yeah, and, and I believe this church, as you guys step out, you're almost like Peter. I see you guys like Peter. Stepping out, taking steps of faith. And when you fall, it's okay. Because guess what? Jesus is there. Because we aren't perfect. We never have to be perfect. But, but you guys are like Peter, and it's going to cause many other disciples to just come and worship Jesus. Because when Jesus came into that boat, guess what? The storms were calm. The wind stopped and there was a massive calm, but I think a massive awe and wonder of who this Jesus is. It's always about worshiping him together and about growing in our faith. And that is what Jesus is calling us as a church to be at this time, is to grow in our faith. It's not about the miracle. It's not about the breakthrough or where some people see Peter as failing, but it's about worshiping him. It's about the son of God. It's about the one who is faithful, the Son of God. You see, if we never step out, we won't grow. Tell someone next to you, if you never step out, you won't grow. So growth happens when we step out. It's about stepping out. I read a quote this week that said the following, it is safer to be on the waves with Jesus than to be in the boat without him. It is safer to be on the waves with Jesus than to be in the boat without him. And I would rather be a Peter that has stepped out knowing that Jesus is going to catch me than sitting in the comfort zone of the boat. I would rather be Peter who started sinking, but he grew massively in his faith and he could be used mightily by God than someone in a comfort zone. Who do you want to be? 
But I want to encourage us that each one of these disciples who were in this boat, they stepped out for Jesus and they gave their lives for the cause of his kingdom. Each one of these disciples saw this faith that Peter had and they were willing to die for the cause of Christ. They were willing to give their lives. That is stepping out for me. Amen. That's stepping out of the earthly comforts into into a heavenly realm where you're willing to die for Jesus, willing to preach the gospel unto death. So the last thing I want to say this morning is that Jesus not only comforts us in our storms, he not only calls us out, but he continues to challenge us to grow in our faith. And For some of you, it's going to be a very practical step this morning. I want to end with that and ask the band to come forward and just ask you in your heart right now. I want you to to close your eyes right now. And I want you to just do a prophetic action now, now. I want you to ask the Lord to show you in your life where practically is he calling you to just take one step because you don't have to walk far on the water. It's just about deciding to get out of the boat. And for each one of you, it's going to be something very specific. But I believe, friends, Jesus wants you and me to trust him more this year. He wants you to put both your hands in his hand. Because most of us have got our one hand in the hand of Jesus, but we've got another hand trusting in something else. It's like an open door or a back door that in case this doesn't work, I'm going back to the comforts. I'm going back to what what I'm comfortable with and what I know. And it was the same with me, just having to step out again, having to say yes to the ministry again because I was willing to go back and just stay in the boat, the comfort zone of the boat because ministry is not easy. But when Jesus calls us to do something, he makes it possible. Amen. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. But he is the great I am in your midst. And he wants you to put both your hands in his hands and he wants you to walk on the water, spiritually speaking. He wants you to do something that you've maybe never done before. It's going to help you grow. So maybe tomorrow when you wake up, you're going to have to just say, you know what, I'm just going to eat fruit and vegetables for a while. (laughs) Welcome to my world. I don't like fruit and vegetables. So Daniel fast for me is like, whoa. (laughs) But the Lord said, do it. Maybe for some of you is to surrender your finances. Maybe, Maybe it's time to start to give. Maybe you've never realized that God is calling you to actually give. He doesn't expect you to give 100%, but He wants you just to give an offering and grow in your giving. Maybe it's to surrender your life to Jesus. Maybe it's to be filled with His Holy Spirit. Maybe you've never walked in the gifts of the Spirit or the power of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit in the fullness And you are in control of your life and the Lord just says, surrender, surrender your life again to me. Maybe you need to serve somewhere. Maybe that step of faith is going to be to fill in that card on your chair. Lord, sign me up for this. I remember when I was first in Shofar, I I didn't know where to serve, but I just started to serve at the hospitality, at the ushering. And I eventually became the head usher in Stellenbosch. Many people, it was such a blessing to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to preach. I don't want to, but I just wanted to welcome people into the house of the Lord. But I was so shy and the Lord changed my life. He took me from being a shy boy to be a bold boy very quickly when I got filled with the Spirit and started to step out and serve and love people. So maybe some of you just need to sign up to serve somewhere, be part of Tanya's ushering team, be part of parking, welcoming or attendant when that happens. There's a lot of stuff that you guys can get involved in. But just serve some way. Step out and say, Lord, I'm getting out of my comfort zone. Maybe for some of you, it's to reach out to one person. Maybe this week you say, Lord, I trust you just to share my testimony or share the gospel with someone or share one word with someone. Just an encouraging word. Start off, you don't have to have a message from heaven. Just tell someone, you know what? Jesus loves you. It makes a massive difference. It just opens the spiritual atmosphere. Maybe that's the step out of the boat that you need to do. 
But I want to ask you this morning to just take a step, a bold step. If you feel the Lord is calling you to step out in some area of your life, then I just want you to stand right there where you are. If He's calling you to step out, I want you to just stand up right there where you are, just in response to this and say, Lord, I'm stepping out of my boat. So it could be a lot of different areas. But if He's calling you to step out in faith, if He's calling you to walk on water, just right there where you are, just stand up as an act, a prophetic act. You don't have to do it. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. But if you feel the Lord is calling you to step out in some area, then just respond right now.